left in probability. Uh, today we're actually going to break this up into two days. Today is what we call conditional probability, which I will explain what that is in just a little bit. Um, Jeremiah, can you get the door? Yeah. Thanks. But I want to ask you guys, how many of you have watched the show Let's Make a Deal? It's on before the price is right. Let's make a deal, don't you think? Yeah. And they wear costumes and, yeah. like, they get to pick prizes and they'll say, like, you know, oh, do you want door number one, door number two, or door number three? And then they have to pick. All right, so if you look at this, um, whenever you have this, there's usually three possible doors. So there's a door one, a door two, and a door three. And you guys can go ahead and do that. You can label those. And so they always ask you to pick a door that you think that the big prize is behind. And then usually the other doors have zonks or really bad prizes. Um, so on this one, it says behind one of these doors is a new car. And behind the other two doors are goats. So what would be the probability that you're going to win a car here? All right, the probability of getting a car now is one third. So after the contestant chooses a door, um, the host opens up one of the other doors because they always open up the ones that you don't pick first. Um, so they're telling you that you open up the door and the door that they're, the one that you didn't pick that they're opening up is a goat. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah. Why? Because the car is still in there. All right. Don't you have a better chance of winning the car if one of the goats is already out of the way? Yeah. All right. So let's just say hypothetically, this was the door that they opened that was the goat. Once you do this, it says the co contestant is given the chance to keep the door they choose or to switch doors. What should you do? Look behind the door and see what You can't look behind <laughs> the door. Keep your door. I'm going to say, say that a little bit louder. You're going to say, do you guys see where she's coming from there? Because once that first door is open and you know that's a goat, you know behind these two doors remaining, one of them is a goat and one of them is a car. So the probability of getting a car on this second try is just one half. There's two doors left and one of the doors has a car behind it. So in this case, I would definitely say like the probability is one half for each door. So does it really matter if she keeps the door she originally picked or if she switches? Is it going to help her at all? No, it might mean like sometimes people think that it's like a mental thing, but no, it really doesn't. Um, so it doesn't matter which door she picks or switches. It doesn't matter if the contestant switches or not. Because both doors have the same chance to win. No, but the thing, this is an intro to conditional probability. Conditional probability is whenever you're finding the probability when you already know something else is happening. So like in this case, we wanted to know the probability of the car, but on the second part, we actually already knew that one of the, do or one of the doors was already a goat. So we were given some information and then that changed our probability. And so we will be working today with probability where you might know a little bit more um, 
you might know that you're taking things out of a certain group. Um, you know, say I know the next example, it has like different types of colleges and male, female. And whenever it breaks things down into categories, um, when you have conditional probability, that actually is just telling you that you're only looking at a certain group instead of the entire, um, the entire list of things that you're looking at. So whenever you have conditional probability, so it says when two things are dependent, so that means that one thing happening causes the other thing to happen as well. All right, so on this one, I want you guys to look at this first. This is the main thing for today. I want to make sure that you guys know how to read that. So whenever you see the P outside the parentheses, you know that that means probability. So this tells you to say the probability of event B and then this line just going straight up and down means the word given. So given just means it's information that you absolutely know. So what's the probability of event B happening given that something else happened? And so what we just found out earlier is what's the probability that the first door is a car given that we used the third door, but I'll say I'm actually going to change that to the third, so you probably should too. So we just figured out on that second half what the probability of the first door being a car would be given that the third door was a goat. Because at the beginning it was one third, but once we knew door three was a goat, it changed it to one half, so it does make a difference. So how do you think we read this next part? What does the P stand for? Probability. probability. We're going to find the probability that we get a female student. And then what does this line mean? Given that they're in graduate school. So today we're going to focus on information where number, or you're going to give some information about a certain event in a table. So for this example, it is showing you two genders and then different types of schools that they attend. And so you guys can see your numbers to the right. I'm actually going to switch to a different filter so the virtual students and the absent students can see the table as I go through this. Alright, do you guys have your calculators ready? Alright, so the very first thing we want to talk about, it says what's the probability that we are going to find a female given that they're in graduate school. So what do we know about the person we're picking? Are they, do we know if they're female or do we know they're in graduate school? Which one is given? Alright, the sec, whatever is given is the thing that we absolutely know. So what we are going to do, instead of taking the probability of female out of this entire group, we only need to look at graduate school because we know that they are in graduate school. So we don't have to worry about two-year college. We don't have to worry about four-year college. We are only worried about the graduate school. Now, it tells you how many females are in graduate school. So there's 1,000. 954 females, but we're only going to take it out of the graduate school total. So you know how many males and females are in graduate school, so how would we get the total of that? Yeah, we're going to add those two numbers. So we are going to add 1,349 plus 1,954, and I actually sometimes even like to just put in a totals column. And I know that my total for this column here is 3,303. 
So there I can switch it so you guys can see. So I like to, since we know that this is the given information that they're in grad school, we only have to look at the graduate school. It's a row. So we're only looking at this row and the probability of being female, the number of females divided by the total number in the graduate school. So go ahead. We are going to answer today in decimals. So what is 1,954 divided by 3,303? Hmm? I don't think so. You want to say, grab a packet off the counter. So if I divide these two numbers, I'm going to say, you guys have your calculators. Take 1,954 and divide it by 3,303. All right, 0.59. And we're going to round to three decimal places today. So is it 0.591 or 592? Mm, look at that number after. It's 5915. So does that 5 tell you to round up or stay the same? Round up to 0 0.592. All right, now for the next category, it says what's the probability that we're going to have a student that's in a four-year college given that they're a male? So which one do we absolutely know about this situation? We know that they are a male, so they are given. So if we go look at our table, Males are this first row. So we are only looking at this row for this problem. Now, do we know the total number of males yet? I would always recommend getting totals before you answer the question. So the first thing you guys need to do is we do need to add up how many males we have in total. So 1866 plus 4324 plus 1349 gives us a total number of 7,539. You guys definitely need to write that down. All right, so in this row, because we're only looking at the males, how many of them go to a four-year college? So it is 4,324 out of the total number of males, which we do have to add that on this one to get that number. So we are going to take 4,324 and divide it by 7,539. And we get, if we round to three places after the decimal, what do you guys get when you divide that? 0.574. So whatever information is given, so in the first, in, er, so in that first one, since the given information was a row, we only looked at that row. The second one, the given was a column, so whenever we were talking about males, we really could just ignore the other half of it. We were only looking at the males because we knew that the person that was a male. I'm gonna say, do you guys have any questions on that? All right, so let's go to the next page. All right, so in this second example, we're dealing with recycled material and whether or not it's recycled or not. Um, my recommendation for you, do you see a totals column anywhere on this table? All right, so the first thing I would do is I would make a total for your rows. So I would add up both paper numbers and get a total number of paper wasted. 
I would add up your metal and get a total number there. Glass, plastic, other. But then also get a column total for your recycled and your not recycled. So the first thing that you will want to do if you do not have totals um, at the end of each row and at the bottom of each column, that's the first thing you'll want to do because you have to have those totals to answer questions. So I'll give you guys some time to do those. I will do those as well. All right, did you guys get a total of 83 for your paper? Yeah. All right, metal, I got 20.8. What did you guys get? All right, so then 3.2 and 10.4 gives me 13.6. 2.1 plus 28.6 plus 10.4. Alright, so that's the very first thing you guys should do is make totals if you need to. Now, if we look at these examples, and I'll say, I'm going to see if I, well, I might just have to go back and forth. Alright, so for this first probability, it says, what's the probability that a sample of recycled waste is paper? And say, just based on reading that, we have to decide what is given. We're given two pieces or two descriptions here. And um, what are the two descriptions that you see in the problem that you also see in the table? Recycled and paper. So on this one, it says, what's the probability that a sample of recycled waste is paper? Which one is the given? Which one do we know? Hmm. We know the sample is recycled. It says a sample, we want to know, we know it's recycled, but we want to know if based on the fact that it's recycled, what's the probability that it's paper? So on this one, I want to, do you guys remember in, I don't know, sometime in middle school where you did proportions, where you had to set up like a percent over a hundred equals like a part over a whole you guys remember doing this in middle school and then you had to cross multiply to figure out have you ever been told to use is over of equals percent over a hundred ever in your life you know say I'm seeing a few people shake their head yes this is a good thing all right so whenever you're dealing with probabilities you always write the fraction the is over the of so whatever we're saying of is usually the given. So in this case, it says of recycled waste and then is paper. So to write the probability statement, we want to know the probability that it's paper given that it's recycled because the recycled is the part we know. So then we just need to plug in our numbers. 
All right, so we are only looking at the recycled column. All right, so the paper in the recycled column is 45.2, and what's the total or the total recycled? Um. Okay, so if you look at this, Luke, 83 was the total for the paper. That included not recycled. So since we know that it's recycled, we basically ignore the not recycled. We're only looking at the recycled. We're looking at that column. Only looking at the recycled. So, yep. So it is 45.2 out of 79.4. So then you guys have your calculators. Let's divide that and round it to three places after the decimal. 45.2 divided by 79.4. And that's what I got, 0.569. I did the math yesterday, or if you just look at uh, Siri, I've been alive for 5,970 days. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, now let's take a look at the second one. What's the probability that a sample of plastic waste is recycled? Which one do we know? Which one's the given? Mm. All right, so we know that the given is that it's plastic. But what do we want to know about the plastic? Is it recycled? So in this case, plastic is a row. Now I'm gonna switch to a different color scheme so the virtual students can see this table. All right, so on this one, we know that we are only looking, the given is plastic, so we are only looking at the plastic row. We can ignore everything else. So what's the total number of plastic waste? 30.7, that's our bottom. 30.7, that's our total plastic waste. Now out of this 30.7, how much of it is recycled? 2.1. That's not very much, is it? We're saying out of the 30 million tons, only 2.1 million tons is recycled. So we take 2.1 and divide it by 30.7. I did not type that in right. I got 0 .068. What'd you guys get? Same thing? We're gonna do three places after the decimal. All right, I actually want you guys to try example 2C on your own. So you are finding out the probability that a sample of not recycled waste is glass. So try this one on your own. We will go over it.
What do you guys think? How'd you do? Good? So on this one, it was asking you, um, the given was that it was not recycled. So we're only looking at this not recycled column, which the total of that is 136.7. Then out of that, how many pounds were glass? And it was 10.4. And so we divide that and we get 0 0.076. All right, so on example three, same thing. Do we have totals here? You know, say if you don't have totals, we definitely want to find those. So we're going to find the total for online and by mail. So 24 plus 12 is 36. Um, by mail, 8 plus 6 is 14. Now what about the total for the males and females? How many males are there in total? 20. And how many females are there? 30. All right, so in this case, males and females are not an equal number. So if you are given the gender, it does change the probability because the probability of being male and female are not the same. So on this one, it's asking whether they pay their bills online or by mail. And it says, what's the probability the customer pays the bill online given that the customer is male? So what's that probability notation going to look like? What am I going to put inside the parentheses? What am I going to put before? What am I going to put first? Mm. It says, what's the probability that the customer pays the bill online given the customer is male? What part is given? Hmm? All right, the part that is given, it actually says the word given that the customer is male. We know that the customer is male, so that goes second. So what's going to go first? we pay online so we can just say online we're finding the probability that they pay online given that they are male so we are only looking at the male section the males are in a row how many total males are there 20 how many of those males pay their bill online 12 out of 20, we can divide that and we get no rounding needed, just 0.6. Okay, so All right, and the last one. All right, when I read this question, I just kind of laughed because I didn't realize people put shampoo on differently. All right, so it says researchers ask shampoo users whether they sh apply their shampoo directly to their head or indirectly. And um, what's the probability that a respondent applies shampoo directly to their head given that the respondent is female? Okay, I need to know. When you guys use shampoo, do you guys apply it directly to your head or do you put it onto your hand and then? Okay. I didn't realize any, like, I did not know that there was anybody in the world that just took the shampoo and, like, went like this. <laughs> Apparently, they exist. So, if we look at this, um, I want you guys to try this on your own. I am going to have to change it because, clearly, the people at home cannot see what's going on on that, ta on that table, and they don't have the packet. All right, so on this one, what's the part that's given? What do we know about the user here? Female. All right, we know it's female. So that's the given that always goes second. Given female. So we only are looking at this female section. How many females are there in total? All right. 
So we know that there is a 30 total number of females. Out of those 30, what are we trying to find about them? All right, so are we looking for directly or indirectly? Directly. directly. And if you can see directly on to their head is six. So six out of 30 is one fifth or 0.2.